every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Alan Brown, who is the Director of Public Impact at the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are dedicated to bring curing to people with spinal cord injuries. And uh, I will let Dan, uh, Alan, uh, elaborate a bit more on this. And uh, ah, we had a r- really fantastic chat just before the interview. Uh, he made me laugh on three to four occasions. And I'm sure we're going to have fun in the 20 minutes we will speak together. So, Dan, I have to ask you to please tell your story a bit again to, uh, to the listeners. How, what's your story and how did you get involved in the organization? So I uh, born and raised in New York City. And if anybody ever watched the TV show, The Jeffersons, I grew up in that building on the Upper East Side. And in 1985, I graduated high school and my best friend, Daniel Human, was paralyzed. And I actually jumped in to help take care of him and became a little bit of a caregiver. And in 1987 of November, I raised $25,000 for spinal cord research. And I sent out money to the University of Miami and went on vacation to Martinique and I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and I got hit by a wave and the undertow kind of flipped me over my head hit the ground and snapped I was under the water for about two minutes before my friends realized that I was not kidding and um, I was completely paralyzed I saw my life flash in front of me and I tried to kill myself to be honest with you Um, you know I could not move and I, I just I was done and then all of a sudden my friends pulled me out and um, one of them is my friend Adam Schefter, who is a big sportscaster here um, on ESPN. And the other person that uh, pulled me out is my friend Gil. And then David Gitter, who's with the World Poker Tour, uh, who runs their foundation, happened to be there. And I met him on vacation. And we'll get into the poker part of it later. But I um, have always, it's always been near and dear to me. Um, obviously, spinal cord injury because of my friend Danny. And then when it happened to me, it became our life mission, my family's mission to make sure we leave no mayor behind. And now, you know, we're all the Christopher Reeve Foundation. And, uh, you know, I remember when Christopher got hurt, he put a face on paralysis. And we became very close and I helped, you know, mentor him. We spent a lot of time at hockey games together, uh, watching, you know, at Madison Square Garden. And there's one in 50 Americans that are living with some sort of paralysis. And the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation has two missions, one on behalf of Dana and one on behalf of Christopher. Today's care, and that was Dana, always wanted to make sure that Christopher was taken care of, and tomorrow's cure, which was Christopher, who always wanted a cure. And we have all of that bundled into the foundation right now, and it's amazing what we do. Uh, our resource center is free, so anybody can call. We have stuff in uh, information specialists. We have information in about 20 different languages, and everything is free to try to help people understand how to na- navigate paralysis. When I say paralysis, I mean multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, stroke, and traumatic brain injury all kind of fall under that bubble. And we make sure that we leave nobody behind. So we have peer mentors, about 450 of them around the country. Um, Our, you know, like I said, we have resource guys that we're giving out. We get phone calls immediately when individuals get hurt, and we jump in to make sure that they understand how to navigate the system and understand what we can do to make sure to make their lives better. So we also have our quality of life grants where we give out grants. Last year, we gave out a little over $3 million to uh, 133 organizations that could be from pool lifts to uh, racing wheelchairs to uh, gaming devices, figuring out how to get people better at gaming and things along those lines. So we do that where, you know, we're constantly involved. So. You know, and then on the research side, 
I see what's going on. My friends that have some amazing research uh, stimulators inside of them are moving their legs and they're standing up and they're taking steps. And it's just a matter of time before the paralysis community really, really comes to the forefront of where we really need to be. And we're just getting there. So my story is I've done a little bit of everything, but my whole goal is really to make sure that people living with paralysis know that they have a place to go and we're leaving nobody behind, whether it's the mother, father, sister, or brother. When that person get hurt, their whole community gets, gets rocked. And right now, with, during the pandemic, people ask me, you know, I've been home for over 200 days, basically. I really don't go anywhere. And if you look up the word paralysis in the dictionary, it says a state of helpless stoppage, inactivity, or inability to act. And we're all feeling a little bit paralyzed right now. The same way that I kind of get held back over time with infections and skin breakdowns, which kind of is life as a spinal cord patient. Right. <clears throat> I, I got to say that when you tell me the, your story, the synchronicity of it all, you already being engaged to help your friend and then this happens to you. I got goosebumps on, on my neck when you told, told the story. And I also feel a very warm sensation that if someone has this kind of injury, that there is a community that comes to them when they're having it. I can imagine how important it is for them to feel like they're part of something. And that also people like yourself that are so passionate about uh, these injuries 